Get yourself a gym membership while you can. Walk on a treadmill. Walk outside. Jog. What have you. Because it's going to pay dividends to your survival. All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life in the Lair. And we're going to be cutting into this whole e and &E thing a little bit more in depth here. This one is going to be as long as the last one because uh, I'm introducing a, a term that you guys need to become familiar with. And that it's an acronym that we learned in the military. It's PACE, P-A-C-E. That stands for Primary, Alternate, Contingent, Emergency. All right, those are the four levels of plan that you pretty much have to have in place for everything you do in the military. Op orders, warning orders, what have you. You know, if you're going to do a raid, ambush, recon, you got to have those four plans put in place uh, because that really does improve your, your odds of survival astronomically. All right, if you just put together your primary plan and nothing else, well, I'm going to be honest, I have never seen a plan survive initial contact without it having to be modified. It's easier to modify something that uh, you have something close to it. Like, for instance, you go from your primary to your alternate. Those are very close. And then it just gets worse from there. <clears throat> now... From the prepper mindset, if you look back in the archaeological record, especially in the Americas, uh, going back a couple, two, three thousand years, there has been very large civilizations that have existed. The Mayas, the Incas, there's like two or three other ones going all the way back to the Toltecs. And they had very large cities and for whatever reason be it climate change or something else they collapsed and you had uh, basically a huge shrinking of the population i'm sure there was all kinds of pandemonium going on there if it happened then it could happen now all right we have a very very weak supply chain in regards to food and medicine and so forth. It's basically an as needed. And one thing breaks down and that, uh, and that chain of uh, supply, we are 72 hours away from being at each other's throats because at the end of the day, we're just a bunch of hairless monkeys who happen to be just smart enough to make nuclear warheads that will one day probably destroy us. The war on the West is no longer about men or women. It's about the ideological subversion of Western minds by foreign actors cloaked in a public relations friendly outfit called feminism. Join the fight against the destabilization of our very civilization by reading Surviving Fourth Wave Feminism. Learn some inconvenient truths by clicking on the link in the description, because every time you do, a pansexual non-binary socialist cries! Again, I went over this here, you know, primary, alternate, contingency, emergency plan. You know, you need to put together, you know, what you're going to do. Like, your primary plan is probably something like shelter in place and try to ride it out. Most of the time, if there's a natural disaster or something along those lines, if you have enough food and water in a house to ride out one or two weeks, you should be fine before orders restored and so forth. Now, you know, if there is a complete breakdown of the supply chain and the police aren't coming, the fire department's not coming, you're going to have to come up with an alternate plan. Now, in regard, mine is to move to an all, you know, my ultimate plan, move to a friend's house. That's my ultimate plan. You know, I have friends that are further north, not quite as far. The strength in numbers, you know, two or three guys are a lot more uh, safe than one guy by himself. Now, my contingency, which is 
a fallback position. I'm putting together two. I'm actually looking for, uh, and I made an offer on a 30 acre spread in Prescott, Michigan. It's, there's nothing on it. It's just partially wooded field thing. I need, I need to start improving that, but that is one of my fallback positions. Another one is another individual. I will not put the location uh, to where that one is because, you know, that's his business and ours, quite frankly. If you find yourself in an emergency situation, I'm just going to tell you right now, you are fucked. And all you have is what you can carry or what you have with you. These other ones here, you're allowed... A, the luxury of time and the ability to, you know, work out your logistics and move to where you need to move. This one here, you don't. Like, literally, you're in your house. You haven't made any other plans. Next thing you know, there's mobs trying to kick down your front door. You have to run out the back door. And all you can really carry with you is what you have in a bag. And this gets infinitely more complicated if you're married, have kids have to deal with extended family uh that that's just yeah that's just a recipe for disaster right there okay you if you have those kind of uh ties or those complications in your life you 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 don't want to be here all uh, right you ideally want to start here before it gets that bad and then you can have a little bit more time to move from there to your fallback positions now people are like, yeah, what's a fallback position? Well, a cabin, friend's house where you have, uh, you know, supplies and you have agreements with him that it's cool if you go there. Because if you just run out of the area, you're a refugee. And historically, refugees are not treated well or looked upon favorably. Just saying. If you want to have your best chance of survival, you need to have the following things in your person, in your car, or in a bag ready to go. Minimum. You gotta have maps of your area and where you wanna get to. They have to be paper, because if you don't have power, they still work. I learned how to navigate on maps decades ago. I could still do it today in my sleep. You want to have a compass. It's easy to get turned around. If you have a compass, then uh, you can use those maps effectively and you'll be okay. Water purification. When I was, uh, you know, in the Ranger, when I was in the Ranger Battalion in the infantry, we had uh, little bottles of water purification tablets. They worked. The water did not taste good, but they worked. So literally, you can, you can get those like two little bottles of water purification tablets for like 18 bucks on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. You have the ability to start a fire. Now, there's some people out there who have these you know, crazy fire starting kits where you flint and steel and all that crazy stuff. Those are great. They are effective if you are basically trained up on how to do that. If not, it's a pain in the ass. So you gotta have a way to start a fire. Medical supplies. Now when I say medical supplies, I'm not talking about a huge med kit with IVs, tourniquets, and all the other crap. Ideally, you just wanna have a small medical kit to deal with you know, super, superficial bullshit. That, believe it or not, that stuff can get out of hand and turn real bad real quick. Like, you know, sutures, have some iodine, alcohol swabs, uh, different types of bandages, um, you know, different types of band-aids and so for moleskin for your feet, medical tape. So if you, if something's a little bigger, you can, you know, fashion a bigger bandage out of like paper towel or something. It's not rocket science. It's no big deal. You want to have the ability to uh, put up a shelter and cordage. A lot of you are like, oh, it's a big tent. No, it's not. It can be a tarp. Well, you can do a lot of shit with the tarp and you'll be just fine. <laughs> okay, next is a weapon. It depends upon the state you're in, but if it gets to the point where it's bad, you know, the laws can kiss your ass. You just you come first, you have the you have the right to defend yourself. 
Last but not least, have a goddamn plan. All right, so say you need to run away, you have all this shit, you have a plan on how to get to your alternate uh, location or your contingency location, your odds have gone way up of actually not dying, all right? If you find yourself in a situation, if you're a refugee, have value, all right? If you're a kid who just sat in his mama's basement forever and all of a sudden you're running down you know, the street trying to get out of the city and you find yourself outside the city limits and you start asking people, could you please feed me, please help me? You're not gonna find any help, you have no value. I'm sorry. All right, if you're a mechanic, you, you have a skill that you can swap for food. If you're a nurse, that's definitely gonna be needed. Even better yet, a doctor. Well, let's face it, those guys have money, they're probably not gonna be running around on foot. Bring yourself up to having some value so you're not you know, looked upon in a negative light. Now, you guys are like, oh, that sounds like a lot of shit. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out for you right here. All right, this here is my compass. You can even get them smaller than this. This is a military grade compass. I think this one was like 40 bucks. All right, this is the first aid kit. I have sutures in here, all kinds of band-aids, um, you know, mercurochrome, iodine, alcohol, medical tape, duct tape, and I actually have some pressure dressings in here as well and uh, the water pur purification tablets in this one little box. All right, you can buy this on AB and build it yourself. All right, now here, here's the fire. See how this works? It's an old brass lighter, and look. Instant fire! <laughs> okay, so if you can make a fire and you can build shelter, because this is actual tarp here. It's, uh, I believe this is eight by eight, and it reflects heat. This cost me like 15 bucks. It's nothing. And a little bit of cordage so I can tie it to some trees. You know, if you're running all day, you're pretty much gonna stay pretty warm. And if you need to chill and recharge your batteries, you put up the tarp, you light a fire, stay in position four to six hours till you're rested and rehydrated, bust it all down, put it in your bag or whatever, and bail. Okay, again, we have the pace here, primary alternate contingency emergency. Now, when it comes to getting out of the area, your primary plan, get while the getting is good, and you can use the roads, cars, trucks, planes, trains, boats, whatever. That's a good method. All right. If you can find yourself ahead of the power curve, great. All right. If you can't use the primary, the alternate is surface roads or a boat. Like you can drive all over this country if, and you can stay off the freeways and the highways and use just surface roads. This is going to take you a long time, you know. If these are clogged up or there's, uh, you know, checkpoints or so or, or what have you, the surface roads work pretty good. I'm going to be honest, trying to lock down an entire area to include the surface roads is very hard. It takes a lot of people and um, one little hole in that net and a lot of people can get out. All right. Now the contingency here is either it's partial on the roads with a car truck and then on foot when that means you're pretty much partially fucked when it comes to movement because on foot is the slowest uh you can if you know what you're doing and the time doesn't really matter and you're in good shape you know if you're in a really really hostile environment on foot is probably pretty good uh it's really hard to run down one dude, especially if he knows what he's doing, he knows how to hide and he knows how to fight, which is the last option. I'm just saying that uh, if you know what you're doing, it doesn't necessarily mean a death sentence. Okay, now E means you you are fucked. You're 100% foot from start to finish. So that means that you're running out your back door, 
and you're on foot until you get to where you want to be or you're a refugee. If you find yourself in the contingency or emergency plan, there's some things you can do to get out of the urban environment or from the, away from the cities, which are very effective. I've, d I've done this before. Train tracks. Train tracks are pretty much a straight line out of town. A lot of these train tracks, most of these train tracks are run by, uh, I don't remember the company, the train company that it is anymore, but they basically run freight everywhere and they maintain the track and then there's a certain percentage of land on each side of the track and there's usually a service road, you know, that is there to service the tracks. And literally on one, op one escape and evasion operation, I walked on the train tracks for 130 some odd miles over a seven day period. Yes, they were patrolled. Yes, there were dogs, the whole deal, but I easily was able to do it. And I didn't really have to run at all. Just slow methodical movement, mostly at night and you're fine. Okay, there's all kinds of places to hide there along the tracks to keep you from being uh, detected or seen. Okay, next, and I mentioned this last time, is power lines. Now, where I am at, I am within four miles of a high-tension power line straight shot north, and it goes straight for like 28 miles. So I throw on a pack, have a good set of boots, and I'm, I'm gone. Literally, I could be at the end of that 28 miles inside of a day, maybe a day and a half. I'm old, but it can be done. Okay, another, another one you can do, a lot of people don't realize this, is the edge of the water. You can literally walk along the beach or on the edges of large bodies of water relatively easily, especially at night. I've done that as well. Easily can be done. All right, forest and swamp, self-explanatory. Most people don't want to go into a swamp. Um, it's very uh, annoying. There's all kinds of bugs. You're walking through mud. It smells. It's slow going. Same thing goes for a forest. You know, a lot of people are just not about walking through a forest. They'll stay on the roads or trails in a forest, but... Very few people are going to go off the trail and be able to, to walk and navigate that stuff freely. So again, if you find yourself in these two positions here using any of these methods, you better be in good shape. All right, because if your life is on the line, waiting around or basically relying on you getting in shape and the first week of this bullshit, that's far from the preferred method. And a lot of people who wind up in the contingency emergency parts of their plans, if they're not in shape, they're not going to make it. Get yourself a gym membership while you can. Walk on a treadmill. Walk outside. Jog. What have you. Because it's going to pay dividends to your survival. All right, now, hopefully I haven't gone on too long. At least not as long as the last one. I'm going to go into this a little bit more in detail and uh, bring that information forward to you in future Lair videos. May not be directly after this one, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you guys later.